Hello, good people. Hey, how are you doing? It's been quite a while. It's been a minute. Welcome and welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. Yes, in case you're new here, my name is Rachel Oturua. And yeah, thank you, beautiful people, for watching these videos. And thank you for sharing, for those of you who are actually sharing. And welcome to today's video. Now, today, um, is actually a very beautiful day. It's quite sunny here where I am. And yes, I'm at work. I'm in office. But I've taken some time off. Yes, because a lot has been going on. I've been trying to put myself together at personal, yeah, family and work level. And oh yes, I'm back here. Yes, hope everybody of us is doing pretty well. I believe all of us are doing perfect well. Perfectly well. Yes, I believe we are fine. And we shall definitely get better. So, in today's video, I'll be talking about something very brief, uh, but something we found here, uh, something that is still going on, and maybe something that will keep around if at all we don't get up and say no to the same. Yes, I'm talking about toxic relationships, and I'm talking about domestic violence involving both children and their parents, sometimes relatives or any other person that is involved in a family that is going through the serious don't mind this serious. I injured myself but I will definitely get better. So if you've been following what's going on, for example, in our country, <clears throat> uh, maybe you've been either seeing it on news, you know, reading about it in newspapers, you know, hearing police and other authorities talking about it. We've seen situations where maybe a woman is murdered, uh, he, uh, rather she is battered, tortured, you know, sometimes they are injured, they end up sometimes being decapitated, and they go through a lot, all in the name of keeping their marriages together, or keeping their relationships together. And please get me very well, I'm not here to say that people should get out of their marriages, no, because I know it's a good thing, but again, should we give it so much importance that we should treasure it over our happiness, over our joy, over our peace and well-being? That's a question mark. And please feel free to leave your comment in the comment section down under to let me know what you think about that. Uh, recently, there is a woman in her early 60s who was uh, reportedly killed by her husband. You know? And her body was found in a septic tank in their compound, in the compound of what was her marital home or family. And of course, investigations are ongoing, but it's something which is very, very sad. It's not the only incident that is happening or that has happened. A lot has been going on. You know, women have lost their, their lives. And of course, sometimes men also lose their lives. Sometimes we see children getting involved and they're also killed. They're maimed, they are tortured. But when we get to see what happens thereafter, uh, reports or information always come out indicating that actually 
these people were going through a lot and for some time, but they couldn't gather the courage, the confidence, you know, and the assertiveness to say enough is enough. Let me choose happiness over partnership. Let me choose happiness over a relationship. Or let me choose myself over any other thing. Because, you know, if you're a lady and you're watching this, maybe, or if you're a gentleman, you're watching this, or maybe a young girl or a young boy, and maybe you're not even yet to start thinking about being in a relationship. Just imagine this situation where you're fighting to keep something together, and yet the other part is not playing. You know, it's or her role. Think about that. Because in the case of this lady that I've just talked about, there are reports of a journal. She used to journal to write down whatever was happening. And what comes out shows that she was indeed unhappy for long. You know, like you're returning home every evening. You're scared of what you're going to find at home. You don't know what to expect. You know, it's all bitterness all over. Negativity all over. But you're still going back to that place for one year, two years, three years, ten years plus, and you're still stuck in such a situation. I don't know if it's because of our African culture, because I know us in Africa treasure marriages like crazy. People always think about, oh, what are they, th what are they going to think about me? You know? What is one so going to talk about me? But my dear sister, my friend, maybe if your parent and you're there, think about what would happen if you died. If you have children, for example, think about what they would go through in case you're maimed, in case you're killed, in case maybe you're badly injured, never to regain maybe parts of your body, maybe you lose your sight, Maybe, you know, you lose your, you know, mental abilities to live a normal life. What do you think would have subjected yourself to? Well, we know sometimes yeah, it gets pretty hard, especially if it is involving children. And maybe, you know, that kind of motherly or fatherly love is keeping you there. Some people are like, oh my God, I can't leave this relationship. I can't leave this marriage because what is going to happen to my children or my child, you know, or maybe everything that I've been working for for all this time. But my friend, your life, your happiness, your joy, and your peace, you know, those things are paramount. Because if you're treasuring something and treasuring somebody who doesn't treasure you, then you're looking for life from the dead. That's what I can say. You're trying to raise a dead body. You're trying, you know, you're looking for life where lives none. Therefore, in our opinion, anyways, I think we should learn to choose ourselves over any other thing. I'm not talking about being selfish. I'm not talking about, you know, considering yourself alone, but I'm talking about knowing your worth. I'm talking about you knowing what you stand for and knowing when to stay, when to stand, when to walk, and when to run away. Knowing when you should work towards reconciliation, knowing when you should, you know, I don't know what's happening with my lips today, but knowing when you should run away from a situation or walk away or maybe give yourself some time or some space to reconsider your situation, you know, to find out, um, like, Rachel, are you strong enough to withstand whatever happens? Would you be happy if something bad happened to you or to the people you love or care about. Of course, you wouldn't be happy. But some people are always like, if I'm to die, I'm going to die with this man or this woman, you know, because I love him so much, or I love her so much, she's my everything. 
my sister, my brother, you can't be somebody's everything when they're seeing you as an option. You can't give somebody that first position in your life. You carry them as your priority. You carry them as your number one when they don't even consider you among their options. So for us, we get bothered about what culture, about what people think about us, about what they may talk about us. Let us also consider the situation, what they would think, what our loved ones uh, would go through just in case we died in such a toxic marriage, you know, uh, filled with violence all the time, whether physical, emotional, you know, financial, mental, or any other sort of violence, including sexual, by the way, violence, including sexual violence. So, for us, you're thinking about your happiness. Think about the people whose happiness comes from your existence. Think about the joy of the people, you know, whose joy comes from you. Like you're being okay, you're being perfect, you're being happy is a source of joy to somebody. For example, if you're a mother, you have maybe children or a child, I believe your happiness is your children's happiness. Your joy is their joy. So why can't we stand for that sometimes? Think about your family. You know, we have families before maybe we get other families. Maybe your mother, your father, your siblings, your other relatives. Yes, we want to make them happy. We want to create this perfect situation in quotes. My finger, no. And we want to show the public that, oh, they are very happy. Everything is perfect. They are living in paradise. Yet inside you, the inner you, the real you, the actual you is suffering internally. So, what do you want to choose? What's your priority? Do you want to walk back to your people? Yes, painfully, you know, with tears, but alive. Or you want your body to be taken in a casket, delivered to your parents or your family for burial. Yeah. Consider your options wisely. Remember, we live once. So choose how you want to lead that time. Choose where you want to be at that time. If I were you, I would definitely choose happiness. I would definitely choose love. I would definitely choose joy and I would obviously choose myself over, a, over any other thing. Because remember, once you're gone, you're gone never to come back. You are gone never to come back. So please, if you are to choose, choose what will give you the happiness, choose what will give you the joy, choose what will give you the peace. Choose what will give you, what will make you happy. Sorry about that. There is some noise coming from the other side. Remember, I told you I'm at work. And somebody is uh, on his workstation the other side. Whereas I'm here trying to, you know, to do this talk with you. Uh, meanwhile, if you've just come, please kindly consider subscribing to this channel. Consider liking it and consider liking the video consider sharing it and let's grow together so as i come to the end as uh, i'm talking about you know toxic relationships domestic violence you know gender-based violence uh sometimes when we enter partnerships when we enter relationships we always think everything is going to be bliss everything is going to be you know perfect love from the beginning to the end but unfortunately uh, it sometimes never happens that way we meet the unexpected you know we get disappointed sometimes we cry you know we regret to become stuff but during that process of course there are moments of peace there are moments of joy love and happiness now it can't be all bliss but sometimes we get those moments so, during that period, 
uh, like a couple, um, people tend to work together. I've met some who always, you know, open up and joint, uh, rather hold joint accounts, and they are happily doing that. Others have started investments together. They are joint investments. Uh, of course, they're not thinking about the bad side that would happen uh, once they invest together. Some people uh, have bought property or properties and, you know, even maybe find like one of the parties involved actually never maybe gets, gets the sign because they are so much in love. They trust the other party. They know everything is going to remain okay. But when you are doing that, like you're working with a man or you're working with your woman, maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend and you want to save and maybe build wealth, generate wealth together. Sometimes maybe you might need to think about the legal part of it. For example, what does the law say about maybe joint ownership of property? What shows that maybe you contributed that money towards the purchase maybe of that land, maybe the construction of that house, maybe the starting up of such a business, you know? So, um, some people end up losing out when such marriages or partnerships or relationships come to an end. So, as you're doing that, think about something that is going to protect you just in case things don't work out the way you thought they would do. Think about that. And also think about a fallback position just in case things go weird, you know. Because sometimes relationships go crazy, you know, weird things happen in marriages and they end up breaking and they don't end, and rather they end up not working out. So, what's your fallback position? Do you have, for example, any uh, legally binding documents that are, are there that are going to save you when a rainy day comes? Do you have maybe a separate bank account? where you're saving some money for a bad day or bad days or maybe when your hubby wakes up one day and he's not interested in you or maybe your wife wakes up one day and she's quitting she can't stand you anymore you're no longer having that kind of spark that she was looking for when she got you so ladies and gentlemen beautiful people watching this I think sometimes we need to so they say not to fall so much into thinking that you're in love and then you forget to think about the other part of assuming things don't work out uh, properly or perfectly or as expected. So you can think about that. Something that is legally binding as you're investing, something that will actually show whoever is there to help you get, you know, your part or your share of the investment, you know that, yes, actually, you contributed. Of course, whereas you're a husband, whereas you're a wife, uh, maybe a girlfriend or boyfriend, yes, it could be true, you are providing. Maybe you contributed towards your husband's purchase of some assets, but what shows that you did so? Mm -hmm. What shows? So we should be thinking about, you know, such situations. I'm not saying that they will obviously happen, but just in case it happens, because we've seen such things happening, and maybe they are not about to come to an end. But still, as you're fighting to get all or part of what you worked for, remember your life is paramount. If you think it's going to cause you death, it's going to cost your life, maybe the life or lives of your children or your loved ones, or maybe it's going to leave you mentally, you know, disturbed. My friend, life is everything. You can always work. You can always get wealthy. You can always get those assets that you're fighting for 
or you're trying to get before you leave that toxic relationship as long as you are alive, as long as you have love. So, choose wisely. Don't die in the name of saving the relationship. Don't die in the name of, you know, fighting for your love. You know, I think it's time for people to wake up and to know that if something is working out, then we praise God. We thank Him for it's working out. But once it's not working out, it's not working out. You know, and that's life. Because life itself is not permanent. So what would make you think that maybe a relationship had to be permanent? And even if you're seeing all the red flags, all the indicators that something is dying off, you want to remain there, you want to fake a smile, you want to fake happiness when you're dying internally. Beautiful people. Choose wisely what you should stand for. So that we can at least see a decline in the cases of, you know, murders that result from a long period of, you know, I know, violence, um, you know, misunderstandings, abuse, uncertainty, and all those bad things that we always, we always see there. Because otherwise, I'm saying bye for now. Please kindly remember to hit the subscription, button, the subscription button, you know, like this video, you can share, and please uh, feel free to also leave down below in the comment section what you think about what we are talking about today. Yes, see you. I love you. Let's meet in our next video. God bless you.